Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. The cabinet expressed its sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter. The cabinet affirmed that the National Action Charter forms the basis of the political, economic and developmental achievements and modernization efforts experienced in the Kingdom of Bahrain over the past two decades. The cabinet reiterated its commitment to achieving the objectives of the fiscal balance program despite the challenges posed by low oil prices and the global repercussions of COVID-19, as well as its commitment to continue to adopt flexible and dynamic economic initiatives that support the Kingdom's sustainable development goals. The Cabinet stressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's condemnation of the deliberate and systematic attacks from the terrorist Houthi militia targeting Abha International Airport in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with bomb-laden drones, stating that these attacks endanger the lives of innocent people and are in fragrant violations of international humanitarian law. The cabinet reiterated Bahrain's position in support of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in its response to those serious terrorist attacks. It expressed its sincere congratulations to the president, government and people of the United Arab Emirates on the success of the UAE Hope Probe mission. The cabinet stated that the successful mission is evidence of the advancements made by the UAE across space sciences, which qualifies the country for a seat among leading nations in space exploration. The Cabinet approved a number of memorandums during the meeting. A memorandum from the Civil Service Council regarding the amendment of the organizational structures of a number of ministries and government entities by abolishing certain positions and directors and changing the uh, subordination of others with the aim of increasing efficiency, improving performance and avoiding duplication. The amendment will abolish three positions of undersecretary rank and three other positions of assistant undersecretary rank and will create one position of director rank rank. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to nine proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Speaker of the Korean National Assembly Park Byung Sing at the Rafah Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the steady growth of relations between Bahrain and Korea, which continues to receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness welcomed Byung Sing's visit to Bahrain, noting the importance of mutual visits towards bolstering strategic partnerships and providing equality, equality opportunities or quality opportunities and also emphasize the benefits of international parliamentary and legislative cooperation. His Royal Highness stressed uh, the Kingdom's commitment to further joint cooperation with various countries across Asia, noting South Korea's prominent economic role and industrial expertise, which has contributed to promoting sustainable development across Asia and the globe. Regional and international issues of common interest, were as well efforts of combating the COVID-19, were discussed. For his part, byung Sig also congratulated his Royal Highness on the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter, highlighting its contributions to the Kingdom's continued progress and uh, development. byung Sig also extended his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, highlighting His Royal Highness's commitment to further bilateral ties. byung Sig also wished the Kingdom further development and prosperity. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzi Abdullah Zainal, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Honor Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed his pleasure with the victory of Bahrain's victorious team, member Phil Bauhaus, in the final stage of Tour de la Provence held in France. He stated that this achievement reflects the team's commitment to the technical and administrative body's plans. His Highness underscored the numerous achievements of Bahrain victorious, which are in line with Bahrain's economic vision 2030. He added that Bahrain will continue to participate in such international events to promote the name of the kingdom. He also praised the efforts of biker Phil Bauhaus and his outstanding performance. His Highness wished Bahrain victorious for their success in future competitions. In an executive or an exclusive interview with Bahrain News Center and on the sidelines of his visit to the kingdom, the Speaker of the South Korean Parliament Park, Byung Seog, also affirmed that this visit reflects the development of Bahraini Korean relations, praising the role of His Majesty the King in promoting the development of the kingdom. <laughs>
우리 바레인 방문이 처음입니다. 마침 저희가 방문하는 그날이 그 바레인 하마드 고왕께서 추진하셨던 국민 행동 계획 개정 20주년과 같은 날이어서 더욱 의미가 크다고 생각을 하고요. 방문 기간 동안 우리 하마드 고왕님을 비롯해서 상하 양원의장 지도자들이 따뜻하게 대해주셔서 감사의 말씀드립니다. 특히 국왕님을 비롯한 여러분들이 바레인의 발전 그리고 지역의 평화를 위하여 애쓰시는 모습에 큰 감명을 받았다는 말씀을 먼저 드리겠습니다. 우리 국왕님께서 굉장히 인자하시고 특히 이 중동 지역에서의 평화 그리고 우리 바레인의 번영, 삶의 질의 향상에 대해서 그리고 코로나의 방역에 관해서 깊은 관심과 애정을 보여주신 것에 대해서 높이 존경의 마음을 표하고요. 고객님께서는 앞으로의 서로 협력의 대상이 아시아, 그 중에서도 한국이 중요한 나라라는 말씀을 해주신 것에 대해서 굉장히 감사하게 생각합니다. The National Institute for Human Rights began the process of applying alternative sentences to a number of convicts where the existing sentences that restrict their freedom, such as imprisonment, would be replaced with others that are based on community service and rehabilitation. These measures would make up for the remainder of the prison sentences for the convicts in question. To, the mark, uh, to mark the occasion, the chairperson of the National Institute for Human Rights, Maria Khoury, said that alternative sentences are based on the rehabilitation of the convicts and in order to reintegrate them into society with the goal of humanizing the punishments and spread of love, tolerance and social responsibility. She affirmed that the National Institute for Human Rights participation in this effort alongside a number of other relevant parties are a part of the strategy to enhance the field of human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. She also affirmed the Kingdom's faith in alternative sentences, which she said represents a pioneering effort in the region. Khoury called on all of those who will benefit from these measures to take full advantage of them through positive interaction with the relevant authorities and cooperating with them. The Kingdom of Bahrain is moving forward with tremendous efforts to achieve all Sustainable Development Goals 2030. Public and private institutions are working tirelessly to achieve those goals. The United Nations recently listed Ahliya University as a partner in achieving those goals. Ahliya University is committed to contributing and working towards United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through encouragement of research in various research areas such as quality education, equal opportunities and sustainable growth. To talk more about this, we are joined on the phone by by Professor Abdullah Al-Hawaj, the founding president of Ahliya University and the managing director of its board of trustees. Welcome to the news, Professor Abdullah. Thank you very much. Tell uh, us about the Ahliya University's plan to achieve Sustainable Development Goals 2030 and how do you work with the United Nations in this regard? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Bahrain TV for this opportunity and for your interest in the, in the subject of sustainable development. As you know, the United Nations developed 17 sustainable development goals to protect the planet and to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. Higher education institution plays a vital role in promoting and achieving these goals. So Ahliya University, with the, it's very important to contribute towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Ahliya University is committed towards these goals and want to show as a leading private higher education in Bahrain. So Ahliya University developed a sustainable development plan for the next five years. The plan is developed to reflect Ahliya University commitment towards these goals and to contribute to national strategies as well as international standards. So Ahliya University started with seven, uh, selected seven goals, you know, and the plan is to go, uh, and we selected these seven goals carefully. With the, the, it has to do, of course, with the strategies and with the government directions in Bahrain. So we selected uh, SDG number three, which is good health and well-being, 
And of course, we must select uh, SDG 4, which is the quality of education that is aligned to national strategies by the Higher Education Council in Bahrain and by Bahrain Quality Assurance. We also selected gender equality because it's very important and Bahrain government believes in gender equality, which is allowed with the Supreme Council for Women Initiative. We selected also Standard 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, and Standard 9, Industry, Innovation and the Infrastructure, Reduced Inequalities because of the poor people, and, and the partnership with the goals. So we're working towards that, hoping that Ahliya University as a leading private higher education in Bahrain works with the, uh, to fulfill this sustainable and by the reach by the year 2030. And Bahrain, as a part of the economic vision 2030, it coincides with the uh, 17 uh, SDGs by the United Nations, and we want to reach 2030, right. fulfilling all these 17 goals. You know. So I am very, very happy that Ahliya University is being uh, put as a partner with the United Nations in fulfilling this. Right. Uh, and and yes. this, this contribution by Ahliya University and its commitment is a very important part of the stride of Bahrain itself. How do you see the Kingdom of Bahrain is faring and achieving these goals in general? As you know, you know we these days celebrate the great national charter. And we have a very clear vision. It's been given by the king. He wanted to show, bah to show Bahrain as uh, a country of the greatest services to humanity. And uh, to go in line with the aspiration of the king of Bahrain and the government of Bahrain, we must align ourselves with the requirements of the uh, United Nations, and these 17 sustainable goals are very important to be achieved. And we believe that we can do it. And we believe that we are uh, an example of many, many great institutions in this country and governments. And all of us work together uh, towards achieving these goals, because these goals will ensure the sustainability of things, you know, and will ensure that you know, the less uh, people who had less chances and maybe the poor people should be really looked after. So uh, Ahliya University, as a leading institute in Bahrain, believes fully in supporting these goals and believes fully in working with all nations. And this coincides exactly with our uh, vision and the vision of the National Charter of Bahrain and the vision of the great reform project uh, by the King of Bahrain. Yes, well said. Thank you very much. That was Professor Abdullah Al-Hawaj, the founding president of Ahliya University and the managing director of its board of trustees. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has affirmed in a statement that the Kingdom of Bahrain has managed to limit the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic through the regulations and resolutions issued by the authorities concerned from Team Bahrain. The IMF has also said that the periodic review of updates and the adoption of sound health and economic decisions have helped curb the spread of the coronavirus in the Kingdom of Bahrain, all while maintaining developmental plans. The statement underscored that the Kingdom has managed to provide the vaccine to all citizens and residents free of charge in addition to supporting individuals and companies in the sectors most affected by the pandemic by increasing liquidity. The IMF praised the Kingdom's continued commitment to achieving the main objectives of the physical balance program and implementing its initiatives. 
The U.S. Embassy made a statement in which it congratulated the Kingdom of Bahrain's leadership and its people on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter. It said that the charter represents a cornerstone in promoting social, economic and political development and that it recognizes the achievements of the Bahraini people as well as the shared interests and values between the two countries. It added that the U.S. values the strong strategic partnerships with Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King in all fields and that it looks forward to developing it further. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 6,515 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 248,775. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,173 with 679 recoveries and 640 registered new cases and one death. 272 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 356 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The deceased was a 58-year-old citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.